much for being here this afternoon. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon in support of Cindy Radu and her family. And also as a demand for a national inquiry into missing and murdered indigenous women. Woo!
lot to us to see how many people across Canada have shown they care. We are very grateful for Abby for justice. Thank you. My daughter, Cindy Ivy Canoe, was born July 23rd, 1974 in Athabasca, Alberta. Cindy was my only child for five years until my son Kevin was born. Cindy got jealous because she now had a brother. She wasn't the baby anymore. She had two more siblings, a brother Jeff and a sister Marilyn. Cindy was raised in Colling Lake for nine years until I left Colling Lake and moved to Edmonton, where Cindy, Kevin, Jeff, and Marilyn were raised by my husband, Lawrence McLeod. Living in Edmonton and close to my parents made Cindy happy because she was close to her grandma, who called her Shandy. Losing her grandma at 16 years old broke her heart because she was grandma's girl. Cindy made a lot of friends going to school. Cindy was close to her uncles and aunties. Cindy loved going on Facebook, chatting with her friends, listening to music and watching her cooking shows. Cindy loved to cook and was a good cook too. When Cindy spent a night with the kids, she always cooked breakfast for me in the morning, even though I was not hungry. Mom, you have to eat. That's what she always told me. I took her to bingo, but didn't like it. Cindy said, Mom, how can you sit here for three or four hours? Sorry, Mom, but I don't like it. Cindy was a kind of person who would help you if she could help somehow. At the age of 21, Cindy had a little baby girl. Her name is Brianne, born June 23, 1996, and had two more girls, Brandy and Cheyenne. Cindy loved her girls so much. Later on in 2000, Cindy did not look after her girls because she was a single mom and had a hard time raising them, so I stepped in to help her. So I raised the girls myself. Cindy was thankful for what I did. That's what moms are for, to help your children. But no matter what Cindy did, her kids always came first. Cindy was thankful for what I did. Oh, Cindy's life changed to where she started to hang out with the wrong crowd. Well, what can you do? She was an adult. Cindy was very close to her brothers and sisters. She would help her siblings if they needed help in some way. Cindy was happy when her sister had her own children, so now she was an auntie. Cindy had her ups and downs, but nothing seemed to bother her. She always said, life goes on, what can you do anyways? Losing my daughter Cindy was the hardest thing I've had to go through. Telling her brothers and sister was hard. Cindy's girls made it harder because that was their mom. Going to trial was very hard for me. Then when they found me not guilty, that was a shock. I wish I had more to say, but this is hard for me. That was from Cindy's mother, Donna. Cindy Glidding was a 36-year-old Cree woman that grew up in Colling Lake in northern Alberta. She was murdered four years ago in an Edmonton hotel room by a trucker from Ontario. She would be 40 today had she lived. Bradley Burton is the man that phoned in that he found an unknown woman dead in the bathtub. Upon examination of hotel camera footage, it was documented that he and Cindy had met up in his room two nights in a row and that he had hired her as a sex trade worker for those two nights. It was determined that she had bled to death in that bathtub from an 11 centimeter wound inside her vagina that Burton admits he caused. She was not some unknown woman. He spent two nights with her. She was a mother to three girls. She was a daughter, a sister, an auntie, and so much more. She was a human being. There were many people that loved her and thought dearly of her. She didn't ask for this. She was going to work to earn money, like any of us but her workplace conditions were probably different than most of ours. Barton said that her open wound was the result of consensual rough sex, but her blood alcohol level was four times the legal limit. That means she was nearing a lethal dose of alcohol and would not have been in a state of mind to consent to anything. Besides, he already lied about knowing Cindy, and her voice is now silenced forever to tell us her side of how everything happened. She can no longer tell us whether she consented or not, but I will tell you, she never consented to being murdered.